An American doctor who specializes in genetic conditions will travel to Britain next week to assess Charlie Gard. The 11-month-old baby's family is in a legal battle with a British hospital over whether trying an experimental treatment is Charlie's best interest. The hospital wants to end treatment without letting the parents decide. Now a judge says he's open-minded to new evidence from the physician from Columbia University. The case attracted international attention after President Trump and Pope Francis weighed in. Joining us now is Carter Sneed, professor of law and political science at the University of Notre Dame. He's also director of the Center for Ethics and Culture and served as general counsel to President George W. Bush's Council on Bioethics. So, Carter, you wrote an op-ed for CNN entitled, Why Pope Francis is Fighting for Charlie Gard. Can you summarize the points you make? Certainly. Pope Francis has joined Charlie Gard's parents in resisting the United Kingdom's court system along with the hospital to uh, refuse his transfer for an experimental therapy and, most importantly, to terminate his life-sustaining measures, namely his ventilator, because the courts and the state have judged his life to be no longer worth living because of uh, brain damage that they believe is irreversible. Pope Francis and Charlie's parents, on the other hand, uh, are, really would like to pursue whatever options they might be able to to relieve his symptoms, but more importantly, resist the idea that just because Charlie is looking at uh, possibly at being cognitively disabled, that his life, his life is no longer worth living and therefore we should act with the intention of, of ending that life. Well, you mentioned unduly burdensome. Let's take a closer look at that and the point that you wrote. You said, so long as there is a medical intervention available that is not unduly burdensome and will benefit the patients that Charlie is, not who we should wish him to be. We should do our best to see that Charlie and patients like him receive it. Why do you believe the temptation of death, in a sense, is greater than life and how this sort of plays into the culture of death? What we're seeing in this case is a strong temptation, and it's, a, I think, a well-meaning temptation uh, in, in a kind of compassionate stance to try to relieve someone's suffering by eliminating their life. And that's something that we, sh that's a temptation we should resist. We should always distinguish between an intervention, a medical intervention that is unduly burdensome, that is one that causes pain or discomfort or, or a whole variety of other burdens might be possible, uh, and a person's underlying condition. Is Charlie's case a warning as to what is to come if we don't safeguard ethics in medicine? I do believe that's correct. Um, again, there's a, a natural temptation rooted in compassion to, to terminate the life of someone who is suffering to, as a means of terminating their suffering. Uh, but in this case, you see, especially in the court decisions, a real focus on cognitive functioning, uh, a co cognitive functioning as the standard for a life worth living. And we don't believe that a person's value is reducible to their cognitive functioning. And we have to defend folks who are disabled. And the only way to do that is to draw firm distinctions between interventions that might be burdensome or futile and a life that is difficult uh, and is characterized by suffering. Well, I know that on a surface level, it, these can seem pretty complicated, so it's really nice to get a Catholic approach to this, and you're being able to explain the value of life. Carter Sneed, professor of law and political science at the University of Notre Dame, thanks so much for talking with us. My pleasure.